好，大家请合掌，请合掌。南无本师释迦牟尼佛。南无本师释迦牟尼佛。南无本师释迦牟尼佛。南无本师释迦牟尼佛。无上甚深。南无本师释迦牟尼佛。百千万劫。无上甚深为妙法。我今见闻得。百千万劫难遭遇。愿解如来。我今见闻得受持，尊敬的诸位同学，愿解如来真实义。诸位护法 ，respectful fellow practitioners， 阿弥陀佛 ，fellow Dharma protectors， 啊 ，have a auspicious，wish you all a auspicious evening， 阿弥陀佛。今天呢、啊，在聚。Today, 来给大家。In the, we continue to, ah, give the sermon on how, ah, we recognize, understand Buddhism. Ah, it is very crucial for the practitioners. Buddhist practitioners, it's a very important lesson, and also Buddhism is a high-level wisdom because it can lead all beings to uh, attain true happiness and liberate from the sufferings. Also, it helps all beings to attain. Uh, a life of happiness, so that we can live a life uh, with a meaning, you know, a meaningful life. That is what Buddha uh, taught us. The wisdom in his teachings. It, it helped us uh, in every place. Uh, every time, every time, any place, any time, any environment, the inner world in our heart, uh, it's always beautiful. Also, uh, it helps us to overcome and uh, overcome any uh, circumstances, so that we are not attached or dragged away by the circumstances. Uh, that cause us to uh, bring out the affliction and lead us into creating the um, unwholesome deeds. So it has that ability to prevent this from happening. So this requires wisdom. All this wisdom is to help us, uh, no matter uh, be, be good or bad, or in adversity or in a very favorable condition, uh, it all it can help us to improve our wisdom. Uh, it, the wisdom, the, the, the value of the wisdom in helping us to uh, transforming the conditions. That's why it's important. Uh, because it helps us to uh, it teach us how to change our environment. Uh, it can break through a lot of um, uh, obstacles. Where did the wisdom of you know of this caliber came from? So that's why we're here. We need to understand what he taught, so that we can appreciate and actually use the wisdom he impart to us. That is the true goal of the um, Buddhist teaching. So this is a very summary, brief introduction to everyone, uh, so that we all can learn practice. If uh, 
I have any, uh, uh, if you think I have you know, made any mistakes in my speech, please um, don't feel hesitant to give me some feedbacks um, so that we can all uh, improve together, so that we can go get in depth on the true meanings of Buddhism. Last time, we uh, briefly talk about okay. Buddhism is uh, is not. It's actually an education. Uh, it's about um, discipleships. So it's an education. Uh, that means the relationship between ourselves and Shaiyamuni Buddha is one of a master disciple, a teacher and a student. Just like Amitabha Buddha that we chant every day. So what's the relationship between us and Amitabha Buddha? Teacher and student. Actually beyond that, it's a master and disciple. Because it's it's like parents and children, they cannot be separated. So does the master and the disciple, they are one. So uh, Buddhism is not about gods or worshipping gods or deities. It's about education, it's about discipleships. So some, one day if someone asks you what is Buddhism, you can answer with that. Buddhism is an education. But a lot of um, uh, wise men from the West, uh, all these intellectuals, wise people in the West, they are not ordinary people as well. It, a day, uh, uh, these wise people, after observing all these um, you know, recent phenomena in society, in environment and in religions, they uh, make a conclusion, especially on religion, they are all about gods. That means that it's just about worshipping a deity. To put it even more bluntly, uh, religion has become superstitious. So hence the word are religious, because it has turned into something superstitious, including Buddhism, including uh, other places, churches and that, that, that. You can see that all this religion uh, it has divided diverted too far from its founder's purpose. Uh, it has become a, a, a form rather than substance. Hence, it becomes superstitious because people attach to the form. Uh, they, no long, they no longer understand the essence. So the question is, is that too much? If we put this statement like that, to be honest, it's not. It's not even, it's not over. It's exactly what happened. Let's not talk about others, even ourselves, as a person who chant Amitabha Buddha's name. Um, even I call myself a reciter of Amitabha's name. Have I truly chant his name in the heart? Or do I just do it in the mouth? Do I just do it all uh, without, uh, from the heart? So is it just form or substance? Let's put an example closer to us. How many human populated population on Earth? Uh, so we have about seven billions, right? Right now. So, where are everyone in this world? Everyone's gone from our uh, site. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, we used to play hide and seek. Uh, we all hide in a house. <laughs> Same things going on now. So right now, if you look at the human demographics nowadays, the population, how many are there? About 7 billion, um, 8,750, so 7 billion people, around 7 billion. Is that a lot? 
It's just an approximation. Uh, uh, of course, it will exceed that. For ATEs, there are around 1 billion ATEs. About 1 billion people who do not have any form of religion. 1.01 uh, billion people who are uh, ATEs and the rest are have some form of religion or faith. So it's about 80% of the uh, human population who has faith. So in Buddhism, we have two types, two main branch in the entire earth. There are about 15 types of faith practice throughout this human population. So we have about 80% of people who truly, I mean, who practice faith in one form or another. The question is, since we have so much, you know, people who practice religion, faith, who are supposed to teach kindness and good uh, in this world, but why is the world still messy? Why is it still very turbulent? If you look at our environment, look at the natural disasters that happens again and again, one wave after another, it gets worse and worse and worse. Let's not talk about something far away in the past or future. Our COVID case, uh, look at the COVID case in Australia, in New South Wales especially, it has already reached uh, 10,000. Uh, obviously, we um, still have still far behind uh, United States uh, and Euro, uh, Europe, especially UK. So Australia was considered lucky uh, not being affected with so much, but still a lot. Uh, uh, Sydney already reached uh, 10,000 uh, COVID milestone today. Uh, a lot of people call me, try to stay at home, don't go out, take care of yourself. It's not other stuff, just a you know, infectious disease alone uh, already affect us so much. Not to mention other stuff like bushfire and and man-made disaster, disasters. So back to this question. There are 80% of human population right now who practice faiths or religions. Uh, but why is the world still messed up? And it will keep coming. So why is religion helpless in it? teaching and educating humans because we only stay on the form, on the rituals, on the appearance of practicing a faith instead of practicing, I mean, instead of doing what was taught to us. Did we put it in action? Did we actually accum accumulate the merits? the real merits, the real virtues. No, everything stays on the surface, appearance, in one word, superficial. So in, 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 in reality, we keep permitting unwholesome karma every single day, every single second. No matter where they are, uh, people keep committing the killing, the sexual misconduct, the stealing, the lying, breaking the precepts. Hence, the, that's the cause, the effect is disasters happening every day. In our case, we have not applied a Buddhist teaching. Uh, we have not applied Buddhist teaching in our life, hence not able to prevent ourselves from committing it. Therefore, we need to understand the teaching so that we can actually you know, do it from our heart. So these wise men, great intellects of, our, of the West, they also observe um, religions of nowadays as one issue. Therefore, and that's the issue. So that's why my respectful um, practitioners we must understand the purpose of Buddhist education is to what's the highest goal in Buddhist teaching. 
What is the goal and what is the ultimate goal in going through this education? Because if we don't have a purpose and goal, we cannot get any benefits. For example, chanting Amitabha. If we don't understand why we're doing that, how can we have the uh, reaps the real benefit from it? And how can we be break through the delusion and be enlightened? So the goal is to break through delusion and be aware of the truth. Therefore, I keep advising my dear, <coughs> my fellow um, uh, university students in Indonesia and even professors. Uh, I always tell them, uh, people who actually practice Buddhism uh, is a great person because their goal is to break through the delusions, cut to the heart of the matter, to be enlightened to the reality of everything. People who truly invoke the vow to practice Buddhism, uh, only will be able to truly get the benefits of it. People who truly practice it, they are high level wise piece of person. So their wisdom level is very high. Uh, uh, only then they will be able to practice it properly. It's not just a normal religion, worshipping a deity. So back to our reality, why does all beings suffer? Why do we have one form of ailment and sufferings? Because we are all deluded in one way, in one degree. And then it gets worse and worse and worse. All these delusions and ignorance have clouded our uh, wisdom, our clarity of thoughts, our capabilities, our virtues. And because of that, we are committing uh, wrong stuff, as in our ideas, our views, our speech, our deeds, uh, towards the life that we're living in, towards the universe we are living in, is erroneous and unwholesome. Because we are not aware, we are not aware of the standards, we are not aware of the path we are committing it on a daily basis. Some of us understand that, but have they changed? They have not changed their ways. They still walk the wrong path. <laughs> if we extend further to the people around us, does most human beings, including ourselves, do we also commit a form of unwholesome deeds and karma? Yes. Do you have this kind of uh, errors in ideas and views and speech and deeds? We must acknowledge. By acknowledging it, we are paying, uh, we are doing repentance. Especially in front of uh, vulnerables, right? We all have this uh, shortcomings. Not only that we did not change it, uh, sometimes we don't even realize it. We just leave it be. Let it fester, like a wound fester, and not changing our ways, not repenting it. Hence, the, that's the cause, the effect is that our life is getting harder and harder. If we understand this truth, getting through the bottom of the matter, and do something about it, let me tell you, your life will change at this point because you will truly live a guilt-free, happy life, a very balanced life in your heart. Emotions and everything is very calm and peace because you understand where you're going, why you're getting, how do you get to where you are and where you're going. I also uh, uh, I knew a couple, they are being very uh, kind 
protecting the Dharma. So it helped me a lot propagating Dharma. So her, her, her wife told me that her, um, this couple's the the wife is um, always going after the sensory desires, always pursue something luxurious, good, something better to eat, uh, eat better, sleep better, uh, all the comforts need to be better. And the attitude towards the family is always um, nitpicking. So uh, all surrounded by her desires. So this wife always surrounded the, the desires. And when dealing with people in her own family, she always nitpicks. She does live a life of luxurious. Uh, she has a luxurious life. However, she's always unhappy. She's always not balanced inside. She's always seeking something more, more, more. So that was her state before she actually practiced Buddhism. So once she understand and get in contact with Buddhism, she's started to reflect inside. She understands why is she always unhappy and always making it a mess in relationship with her family. She has changed 180 degree. She, once she learns the teachings, she keeps um, practice in her daily life. One of them is gratitude. No matter what kind of uh, condition she met, be it favorable, adverse, they, she will always keep a grateful heart and that helps her to get through this, to re uh, retain the balance. So we also have pursuits in Buddhism, but we pursue inner peace, we pursue inner wisdom, instead of going outside and satisfy our sensory desires. The true treasure is in your heart. A true wealth, wealthy bank is in your heart. The true wealth is, lies inside your heart. If she has anything extra, she will give it to the um, to other peoples, to people in need. She lives uh, carefree, happily. She does not need pig anymore. That's the look of a person who truly practice Buddhism. Are we like that? Not necessary. When we look at people, people look at things we handle, or look at stuffs, we might actually fall into the trap of being, uh, holding a grudge, uh, you know, nitpicking, pursuing more desires, satisfactions. So we are deluded in that way. That's why we have this teaching is telling us uh, you can awaken from there. As long as you're not fully awakened, you will definitely commit one uh, a certain degree of faults. So now the point is, I have done something wrong. The problem is if I'm not aware of it and not repent and not attempt to change it every day, and allowing it to fester every day, that means allowing it to grow every day, then I must understand that there are consequences in the in behind. So if we keep committing the negative karma, then the consequences is we will continue to suffer in our life, this life and next life and next life and next life. Because we keep doing the cost that lead us to death. We committing wrong view, wrong ideas, wrong deeds, wrong speech, wrong act. They are all accumulating negative karmas. And not just any six dream, the lower three part, hungry ghosts, animals, and even worse, hell. Trust me, it's hard to go out. It's easy to go in. It's very hard to come out. We must understand that, um, I think we should, uh, we're quite familiar 
with a uh, sutra called um, the original vows of Siddhikaba Bodhisattva. Uh, and this Siddhikaba Bodhisattva in China is called Di Zhang. And he's uh, very compassionate, trying to um, help beings in hell uh, to liberate from there. And so he explained why does hell happen. And Buddha asked him, why does hell happen? And then how, how, how the hell happened to be appearing? So the Siddhikapa Bodhisattva said, because everything we do, everything we th think, everything we say commits the karma that creates the hell, commits the negative karma that creates the hell. And that is why our life is full of suffering. Because we are not aware. Because we are not aware of the real realities. Uh, we are not aware of the truth of these matters. Therefore, we have no compass in our action. Once we are aware of it, we will let it go. We will learn how to let go. Because we don't attach to the goods or the bads. No matter what things we're doing, we draw attached to it. We are suffering because we attach strongly. Hence, there are six dreams. My respectful um, fellow practitioners, last time I uh, saw a news recently, there is a very famous star because he's uh, because of the work stress and competitions from his peers. His body has weakened, and he couldn't accept it that he has weakened in health. Because that's the truth of human life, always have deterioration in health. And he couldn't accept it because it hurts his profile as a star in the firm industry. Our current life is something like a very intense and packed one. So he's willing to pay whatever cost it takes. He wants to repair his health. Doesn't matter what deeds he do. He must, he's trying to get himself back in shape. Doesn't matter how long it takes or whatever cost it takes. A lot of people ask these stars. Is your life hard? And then this star says, yes, it's very hard. It's very suffering. He is suffering. So if he understands the truth of the life itself, it's suffering, then he won't do that. Because they understand. As long as you are deluded, you cannot stop yourself from committing negative karmas. And people who commit negative karma, obviously they will reap. You reap what you sow. They will obviously reap negative um, effect, I mean, effect yeah, which is suffering. And in Korea, it's very famous. A lot of people go there for surgeries, trying to make themselves look um, beautiful for uh, beauties. <laughs> Anyone's interested? <laughs> So, become a woman is very hard as well, right? They even have these norms now. Yeah, as a, as a you know, male member of society, we should understand and be uh, empathetic towards the uh, our woman counterparts. Not asking too much. There's a lot of this thing hidden from our side. Doing this kind of surgeries, facial surgeries, you know, artificially, not because of medical, but artificially is just for artificial reasons, is uh, is really disrespecting your parents who gave you the, the body. And there is also karma inflicted in there. People who are wise, they will not do things like this. Therefore, the goal of Buddhist education is 
we must be clear of that is to help us to help all beings liberate from sufferings of the samsara and attain ultimate happiness and that's the if, uh, that's the effect. The cause is to break through the delusion and be enlightened. If you want to be happy, really happy, and ultimately happy, then we must cultivate the cause. There's no effect without cause. There's no fruit without seeds. So what's the seeds? What's the cause? We need to let go of the delusion. That's why we are learning Buddhism right now. It helps us to break through this layers and layers and layers of, you know, delusions. Only then you can improve. So where do our suffering came from? Delusions. Because we're not aware of the actual reality underneath the phenomena in your environment. In your life, things that happens in your life. Why that does this happen? We're not aware of it. That's it. However, if you are awakened to the truth of your life, if you are aware, understand, you know why, you know the cause, the effect, then you will be a very happy person. Because all you think, all you see, you know, your ideas and views, all you act, all the thoughts that you generate, it are correct and wise, naturally. So just add just that compass a little bit to the right direction. Everything is in the right, everything will come together. So in summary, be awakened from the delusion is the cost to liberate yourself and your others from sufferings and attain happiness, which is the effect. So why are we aware of? What should we be aware of, awakened to? If you want to aware, I mean, so what are you going to uh, aware of? Because you need to get the the, the cause right. Only then you can get your the effect that you desire. So during the time of Buddha, there are four sentences uh, in Chinese. It's called get awakened quickly, as soon as possible. Be awakened as soon as possible. First thing to be aware of is the impermanence in our life. That's the first part, first step. If you can understand this essence of teaching, then your whole life will change. Your the way that you view your life will be different. Because everything is impermanent, would you be nitpicking this little stuff that doesn't matter? In the long run, sometimes we may met some situations that taught us it is impermanent. No matter what you are pursuing at the moment, when you pursue it, how much you pursue it, how much you own, it will always change. The, the, the only constant is the change. Your body, for example, something very close to you, your body. Uh, I'm 23 years old, I'm 25 years old, I'm very handsome and all that, very young. But remember that it's impermanent. It will become old, it will age. That's iron. Not long after, no, in human world and compared to the universe, it's very small. will pass away very soon. Long or short, it's still very short in the long run. 
Whatever you own, obviously. You know, we can't even keep ourselves young forever, let alone the things that are around us, our properties, our uh, yeah, families or anything. They will all change. As time passes, that's the truth in everything. And once we see through that reality, our life is very peaceful, very happy, because we don't fear of losing. That thing does not happen anymore. Because you accept, once you're aware of the truth, you accept whatever comes to you. You change your attitudes. You will no longer attach like you did before for something that does not matter in the long run. Because in your heart, you have these two words, in Chinese is two words. These words are impermanent. And that's the way Buddha helped us to get awakened. He keeps saying to us, have you get enlightened? Buddha keeps repeating this four sentence. Are you enlightened? Have you been enlightened? <laughs> Uh, some people might say, uh, it's okay, take your time, one by one, step by step. Buddha uh, is very, uh, very compassionate, compassionate, and Amitabha Buddha as well. Uh, because you, you take it slowly, Buddha is very compassionate, he will force you, he will follow you slowly. Or you awaken to this a little bit, he will help you a little bit. If you're not, you know, urgent, then Buddha won't be urgent. But Buddha always wants us to be awakened as soon as possible. Mm. This process of turning from an ordinary person to a sage, it has to be done as soon as possible. How did he show his commitment? to this goal of making, helping everyone enlightened as soon as possible. He gave Dharma sermons ever since he got enlight enlightened under the Bodhi tree. Every single day, until the very end of his um, life that he appears in this earth at the age of 80, he gives Dharma talk basically every single day until his Pari Nirvana, Yuan Qi. He did not even take a day off from the sermons. The best example is in the very last day of his existence in this appearance in, the, in this world, he even managed to help an old man to attain Arahant. Basically, he got the first stage of enlightenment liberated from six rooms. So this man is actually very wise, but he has not awakened, fully awakened. And he has been hearing, heard of the Buddha during his Buddha's time. But he heard Buddha is going to Nirvana soon. That means he's going to pass away in our terms. He immediately ran to Buddha and seek guidance before he passed away. And he's the last one to take, attain Arahant from him. Shayamun Buddha has contributed a lot during his time to his society and the world. Back then, it's to the, towards the different kingdoms. After he passed away, everyone cremated him. So Buddha is very compassionate. He always sees that this might happen. Everyone respects him so much. They might even go for a war over the, his remains, you know, his uh, salits. People who cultivate, they, when they got cremated, they have remains of, you know, crystals. And this the last student of Buddha who attained the Arahant, he helped to resolve this conflict that about to happen over, you know, the Buddha's um, Christus, that crystal remains. It's very beautiful. That's, so this last student of his has helped to divert the war away. So very good. So what did he do to prevent this from happening? That's your homework. So you can search on the last student of Buddha before his Nirvana. 
So in 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 short, holding all these sutras, all these talks the Buddha gave, is to help us to break the fetters and attachment because these things is why we are painful every single day. Uh, this attachment fetters. Uh, if you ask the young people, for example. Do you feel pain and suffering during the, you know, your romantic relationships? He said, yes, yes. But why are you going through this? Because it's enjoyable. They're enjoying the pain and suffering. And that is the delusion and ignorance of the beginnings. That's why I like to, uh, I would like to encourage our uh, translator here to, uh, to be a monk. If you become a monk, we have a uh, have a uh, a lot of uh, fortune because uh, going through relationships, those romantic relationships, they are not real because it, most of the time, right? Not all, but most of the time, they might turn into love, turn into hate. So that's the spirits of uh, Buddha teachings. This is what teachers taught us how to get through the delusions and get enlightened. Buddha's education is not about divinity. Uh, the spirit of Buddhist education is not about divinity, it's not about that religion is not about, definitely not about superstition. It's about discipleship, uh, emphasis on master and disciple, passing down the teachings, learning all the examples and role models, not just knowledge. So we must understand that. Teacher, do not have any conditions from, from us. Shaiman Buddha does not ask anything from us. They do not ask any favors in return. Obviously, it includes all Buddhas. Amitabha Buddha is not exempted from that. He do not ask for anything in return for all these benefits he bestowed to us. What makes these great teachers happy is you're successfully liberated from the sufferings and attain the ultimate happiness. That's the happiest person, that's the happiest news that Buddha would receive. Truly, if you attain enlightenment, uh, they will come and congratulate you. We, we call it Soji, but it's like congratulations. Welcome to the club, the Buddha club, for real. Because you, you, you are free, you are truly free. That's, that's the thing that he rejoiced the most is you are awakened. You understand the realities of life and death. Uh, congratulations. Therefore, able to see his own students uh, to liberate from six realms, the sufferings, uh, to live a happy and fulfilling life in the presence and be able to liberate from the sufferings of six realms, how? By reborn in pure land. That's the best thing that Buddha would. That's the only thing that he will ask. I mean, uh, he wants to see from us. So he didn't ask for anything else. He don't say, oh, you have to uh, offer me a lot of incense, offer me a lot of water, juice, or wealth, or anything. He doesn't need that. Or you need to give me your most precious thing to me. If this is not Buddha. Buddha do not ask for this. The one thing that he hoped is everyone to be awakened, to be like him, free and awakened. Once you awaken, you are happy. You never will. You will never be truly happy if you are fully deluded. Every day he gives you the sermon. How can uh, but we are still uh, attaching to the things that are impermanent? So how can we be happy? Those he already told you these things is dragging you and not making you free. It's just like a wing being clipped. How can you be happy if you got clipped? Be free. They tell you to let it go so that you can be free. That's why you need to listen to his teachings. 
。It's the whole point of giving seven someone dharma talk. That's the mission of doing that. It's not for others. People who give dharma talk, to be honest, is talk to yourself rather than talk to others. Talking to yourself is the first thing, first point of giving the sermons. Encouraging yourself to liberate, to be awakened. So, as a student of the Buddha, as a disciple of the Buddha, in Buddhism, what's the biggest, uh, what's the biggest uh, gratitude that we have received? Repay is our teacher. We need to repay our teacher. How do we repay our teacher? Live happily. Live decently. Live righteously. Do right by your people, by the love, your loved ones, and pay love and respect your family, your parents. That's how you repay them. That's why in Buddhism you cannot depart from filial piety, cannot depart from respect towards teacher. If you can be filial to your parents and be respectful to your teacher, then you are the number one happiest person in the world because you're repaying someone who gives you the most. This is very important. That's the root of all virtues. If you don't even know how to repay the person who gives you the most unconditionally, for now it's your parents and your teachers, which is the masters, people who help you along. Then how can you be real if you treat someone else outside happy, uh, respectfully, right? That means to be a decent human being, we need to repay gratitude. At least it's to start with person who actually give us a lot of gratitude. That the person that we have a lot of gratitude for. Grateful for. So it all starts from family. And to start with family, how do you educate family? Filial piety, which means love and respect. So saying, upon touching these subjects, any master, good masters, they will always treat his disciples like parents look after their children. Just like the parents, they always want to see their parents, their children be successful in whatever they do in the society. So do the teacher. Same meaning, same sentiment, same relationship. That's the relationship Buddha to us, parents to children. Is that easier to understand if we if I explain like that? So this is a brief summary on the first part of the class today about the goal of practicing Buddhism. So what are the goal of practicing Buddhism? Liberate from suffering, attain ultimate happiness. That is the fruit. What is the seed? The cost is to be break through the delusions and attain enlightenment. Enlightenment means aware of the realities and not being deluded by it so that you don't create the cause of your suffering. And hence, because of these teachings, it proves that Buddhism is no longer, is not a superstition, is not a religion in, in the sense of divine worshipping. It's just a very down-to-earth education of helping us to get through sufferings. That's the highest goal, to get liberation from the pain that we face now. So what are the second lessons? The second talk. Just now, first time, first talk, I analyze a lot of times that what's the goal of learning Buddhism is to get attain happiness, is to be awakened. Now, we must understand what are we seeking for in Buddhism? What are we looking for in Buddhism? What do we ask for in Buddhism? 
This is also very important, so that our goal is not misaligned. So first is purpose, second is what do you look for in Buddhism. Otherwise, why would you come here, right? We must look for something. So now we need to be clear about that. What are we looking for in Buddhism? If you do not believe, you can ask people around you. People you know, your acquaintance, your family, your relatives, including ourselves or people around us in this club. Today you learn Buddhism, you, know, you say you practice Buddhism. What is the main thing a Buddhist practitioner should seek for? The reason of being, raison d'etat for Buddhism. A lot of people won't be able to answer you. And a lot of people were not aware of it. Uh, a lot of people say, I, it's just to uh, ask for uh, uh, peace, uh, prosperity, safety, wealthy years, asking for this. A lot of people, they have one, um, this idea, Buddhism. They're seeking for wealth, securing promotion, safety and security, prosperity in business. Yeah, really, they all look for that. If you look in the temple, Buddhist temple, a lot of people, you know, contribute the flowers, incense. What do they look for? This thing, worldly stuff. However, we must understand asking for this wealth, promotion, safety, security, prosperity, you can't seek this like that. If that's what we understand Buddhism is, and this is how we ask Buddha to help us, then we, we can't get it. Not even, not just Buddhism, other churches, Christianity, Islam, or, 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 or any religions. It doesn't work like that. What are these phenomena we call? It's what we call being superstitious and acting blindly without guidance. That's what happens when you understand the reason of being of a religion, of a teaching. In Singapore, there's an area, it's called uh, Temples of Guan Yin, uh, Guan Yin Miao. Uh, this temple is uh, focused on the Bodhisattva Avaloitisvara, which is Guan Yin, very famous. Very famous, very, a lot of people there giving the incense and wishings. They all put, uh, you will be able to attain wealth, you will be able to attain uh, high pro positions, promotions, uh, by just touching the statue, idol, idol of Guan Yin. Some people say, oh yeah, I just touched the statue of the Guan Yin because doing that will give me good luck to my hand so that I can earn a lot of money using this hand. So you can see that majority of people who say they practice this faith, they go to the temples and start. What do they look for? All these things. Before we learn Buddhism in depth, we always have this kind of uh, actions, right? For example, my mom uh, went to the temple. What do they look for? So that my uh, children can grow up, uh, live a happy life, peaceful life so that uh, whatever they do, they be successful. That's common, that's very common. I believe it's it's very common. Uh, like, yeah, when you look at Buddha, just pray for peace, uh, pray for good luck, prosperity, uh, changing in luck for better. Including my own temple, the temple that I preside over. They opens at 5 a.m. Oh, 5 a.m., very early. They open the door at 5 a.m. Receive the receipts. A lot of people come to the temple because our temple is very close to a supermarket. 
<laughs> a lot of people, you know, like, hey, 10% next day, there, you know, might as well come to here before I shop for groceries. They come here, they ask for this. So if you tell him, do you want to listen to the Dharma talk to understand the Buddhism in, in, in truth, the actual Buddhism? No, they're not interested. They're only there for wealth, asking for wealth, asking for promotion. So that's why we are labeled as religion and superstition. In Buddhism, so what are we looking for in Buddhism? What should we look for in Buddhism? Buddha has called it with special terms. Buddha has taught a lot of, give a lot of talk. And the term is called Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi. That's the thing we're looking for in Buddhism. It's, it's a sound from Sanskrit. This is what such uh, Shyamuni Buddha never failed to mention in every single sutra that he taught during his time. When you open the book, there will always be this word appear in the book, in the sutra that recorded for his teaching. This is a Sanskrit word. If we translate into Chinese or English, it's called unsurpassed equal enlightenment. So, A in Sanskrit it means without. Nutara means surpass, unsurpassed, unexcelled, Anutara. Sam is correct, right, complete. Yak is Sanskrit. Sam yak itself is called equal, identical to. Body is enlightened, awakening. Combining all these words together. Unsurpassed, equally perfect enlightenment. This is the ultimate goal of Buddhism, Anuttara Samyak Sambhoti, and that's what we all seek for, what Buddha and Bodhisattva seek for in the end, work so hard for, for this one. This enlightenment is pure, perfect, unsurpassed. If you look for this one, then you are truly a hero that they call Da Zhang Fu, Da Ren. Because this enlightenment is real. It, put it in any circumstances, it will generate a lot of good stuff. But if you look for this wealth, we call it the phenomena, the, the form. Those things are conditional. They can't, um, they, they will appear when the condition met and cease to appear when the condition not met. So they are fake in that sense. They are not permanent. But this enlightenment means the awakening to it. It's unsurpassed. So we'll leave it to next week to understand what is it, why is it called Anuttara Samya Sambodhi? What does it mean? Every sutra has it. Every single Buddhist sutra has it. Uh, because I would like to get in depth, in, in better depth, so that we understand uh, the first step in learning Buddhism is to set a goal. And the first goal we need to set is to liberate from sufferings and attain happiness. And the second goal we set in, in Buddhism, which is what we look for in Buddhism, is this Samyak Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi. Going to pure land, why do we go to pure land? Pay so much hard work to do that. Give so much hard work to uh, uh, chant and join because you want to attain Anuttara Samya Sambodhi in pure land. No matter what method you're learning under Buddha's teaching, the whole thing is to lead you to Anuttara Samya Sambodhi. So next week, I wish, uh, um, I wish to see you all again uh, to share with uh, the content of this word. Today I uh, like to be grateful to everyone else uh, to give me a chance uh, to explain how we understand Buddhism better. I would like to be thankful to the youth group, our uh, 
Uncle James and Auntie Cynthia uh, to give us uh, a chance, a place, a people and the conditions to enable this to happen so that we can better understand Buddhism because it's very important to us in our life. Uh, but next week, uh, next Wednesday, uh, I look forward to uh, your attendance to your participations. Your appearance, your participation gives me um, energy to keep going. Gives me the encouragement to keep going. Uh, without you guys, how can I uh, how can I improve myself? Without teachers, I I am a student. You are the teachers. People who give the Dharma talk is the student. People who sit and watch me talking the Dharma talk are all teachers. I'm not trying to, you know, um, uh, how to say, flatter everyone. This is what happened. This is the right attitude we should have if we're giving Dharma talk. Everyone is teacher. I'm the only student. So I hope that we can all learn from each other better. Uh, also, I would like to borrow this uh, chance to wish you all uh, a happy new year in advance, paying goodbye to 2021 to welcome 2022. So, uh, in, in the past, before I arrived to uh, Australia, uh, I always saw the news in our Sydney Harbour. Uh, Sydney Harbour Bridge, they always have a very nice um, firework display beautiful firework display. Every year, Australia is the first country that spend the most in celebrating New Year in terms of the fireworks. Uh, your nation's coffer is very deep in Australia. <laughs> if you can use the money to uh, donate to the poor people, to the people in need, to impoverished people, then it's very good. You guys will get even more merits. People ask me, oh, you're in Sydney, why didn't you go and you know look at the fireworks? I say, is that, the, is that important? Uh, so in these COVID times, uh, if you have nothing important, try to stay at home, uh, prevent contact. Now the most important priority is to protect your life because you need to borrow this life that you have to cultivate to leap forward into may leap higher into pure land. So take care of yourself and earnestly chant beside the name of Amitabha Buddha. Um, I would like to uh, advise all young people to be caring towards their parents, no matter their temperaments or what they did in the past. So be kind to them, be loving to them. Also, cultivate good relationship with everyone. This is an important attitude to have. So next week, we will continue to learn Anuttara Samya Sambodhi. So thank you so much. I uh, wish you a good night. Uh, thank you, Amito, for Let us all uh, dedicate merits. Uh, let us join our palms. Disciple, your name, Dylan Lee, would like to dedicate the merits today to all beings so that they are liberated from sufferings. To dedicate all merits to all the karma creditors to born in pure land. Repay the four kindness above, relieve the suffering of trees, those in three paths below. May those who see and hear of this aspire to invoke the body heart, cultivate the teachings for the rest of this life, be born in pure land. Amitabha, for thank you so much.
大众，谢谢大师。阿弥陀佛哈，再见，再见，再见啊！阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，晚安，晚安，拜拜，拜拜。不送法师回来。拜拜。阿弥陀佛。